welcome back to Pink's 47. So the first thing I'm going to do today is make a start on this scratch built humpback bridge that I'm having to play with. So this was just a bit of a draft really and a template but I figured that I might as well use it. So I've given it a bit of a sand down with a bit of 120 so I've got some a good key on it. I'm going to be using a whole range of different materials. One of the materials I'm going to use is this Metcalf building sheet. And I'm going to be using that on the inside to form the arch. So that will be something like that, obviously trimmed down. And then on the outside, like I've shown in some previous videos, I'm going to be using this 7mm scale from Slater's. And I'm going to be cutting out the arch and I'm going to be using that as my face on here. I've also got a 4mm dressed so I may use that on this inside edge or perhaps as a second course of stone along here. I'm still figuring out how I'm going to put the facing arch bricks along here. I think I'm going to use some 0.8 laser board. What I need to make sure is they sit relatively flush to each other. So I think my first job, I'm going to get the arch in underneath first, leave it overhanging slightly, trim it down once I've finished, fill in here, just get rid of some of these gaps, get rid of the screw heads. So that's going to have a little skim in there and then we'll take it, take it from there. Right, now that's dry and in place, I'm going to fill the road surface. So I've cut these little bits off, one for each side. It's going to go in here. So I think I'm going to fill it first and then perhaps while the fill is still wet, super glue this back edge and push this up against it and down sitting into the filler. I might have to fill this corner again once it's dry but that's what I'm going to have a go. The reason I thought I'd film this bit there's been quite a few questions recently on the WWS helps and discussions page on these two products so we've got the sculpture plaster and the fibre mould so this is just like your normal plaster you just it's just a powder so you can mix it with water to the consistency that you want and use it for your landscape. I'm actually going to use this for my road surface, but because I want a little bit of body just to cover over these screws, I'm going to have a go at using the fibre mould as well. So if you don't know of this stuff, it's got the um, it's just got fibres in it, so it's the same stuff. Similar plaster. It's got a bit more body to it, so it's almost just got strands of fibre in it. And it will give you a little bit more body. So because I want a bit of a smooth surface as well, I'm going to have a go at mixing these together. A bit of water. And then I'm going to get a spreader card. I'm going to cut the spreader card down to the exact width. And then see if I can get it in one nice skim in here.
as you can see by that that's not giving me a bad road surface anyway a couple of little ripples here here and there that i can possibly sand out if i need to but all in all that might make quite a good road surface right not much more i can do to that until that's gone off probably i'm gonna refill this edge perhaps sweep some building sand in there and some maybe some one mil static grass obviously i can wet sand this lip down i've got to work out how i'm going to do the coping stones yet i'm going to figure that out as i go along so once that's dry well then put the um, faces on and then i have to do the facing bricks along here and that should be coming on then not a million miles away from primer <laughs> Right, so there we go, that's what we're up to so far. Quite pleased with it. Got a bit of work to do on the road. And my next task is putting the coping along this top edge. Now I've been having a good think how to do this. I was considering using laser board and fold it in half with, it, with the copings already pre-cut out, but trying to go that way and that way I figured be quite tricky so i had a word with world world scenics about getting some modeling clay i asked them do they know anyone that supplies it and they supply it which i had no idea they did so it's an air dry clay and i've got a 250 gram bag here and this is what it looks like if you haven't seen it before it's pretty much like play-doh really or plasticine a little bit damper perhaps so my plan is to roll a load of this out like a sausage shape put it over the top of the arch mold it into say half a sausage and then before it goes off cut the coping stones in with some sort of carving knife so that's what i'm going to have a go at doing next so i'm just going to do a little bit at a time so get it into sort of a cylinder shape. And then I'm just going to mould it in place. Making sure I cover this join to begin with. And as you can see, just your thumb it smears over quite well. And then I think the challenging bit is going to be just trying to get this quite equal I may even try just wetting my fingers with some water just to help spread it out but for now I'm going to get it all in position and then try shaping it so as you can see I've made a start from putting the coping stones in I'm just using a Stanley blade and I'm doing it by eye I'm just lightly going over the top, trying to keep an equal gap and for scale they're sort of two, three, four times even bigger than the facing bricks. I'm surprised how big they are. I, I didn't think it would be in one big block but the more pictures I've looked at the more that I've seen that they are one big block that goes from this end to the other end i imagined it was going to be in four separate blocks but i'm quite pleased with that so i'm going to carry on carving them out now so it's been 24 hours since the previous clip and after having a few more studies of some pictures and 
couple of chats with friends and stuff, I decided that my coping stones were way out of scale, way too big. And as soon as I'd put this 176 truck on, I just realised that it was miles out. So after having a bit of a think on what I could do, I managed to tease all the clay off and then I hot glued it back on so it was solid. And then I've used some 80 grit sandpaper and I've just moulded it and just shaped it and treated it almost like filler. And I've managed to get it down to a scale that I'm a lot happier with. There's a couple of bits that have fell out which I'm just going to remould in now with clay again let that go 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 off overnight and then sand those bits in i'm going to use filler on some of these edges and then paint it all so i know there's still imperfections in this and there's still bits that i need to work with what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint it all gray so it's uniform and then i can pick out any bits that i want to modify or improve or just add a bit more character here and there the first thing I'm going to do is add some plastic primer to it it's quite a large area of plastic so I'm going to plastic prime it which is a clear and I'm going to use this stuff which is a uh, pretty cheap stuff but it does the job and then once the plastic primer is dry which is seconds really with a heat gun I'm going to put some ultra fill on it which is a bit of a high build it won't really bury many imperfections but the idea of using it is to get it all uniform and then I can pick out the bits that need any work. Mm -hmm. 